This next section, we're going to continue to talk about the, the lower body mechanics. And now we're going to get more into to the actual mechanics of, of how your, your leg should be coming through the ball. So we've already said, have that short six to eight inch step in time with your load. Make sure that the front foot gets down in time or even a little bit early. Make sure that your hips are leading your swing. So how does that all happen then? Well, once I get to my base, we call this your base, once you've taken your stride, your front heel should be slightly up at that point. So I'll try to give you a better angle of that, that front heel. Hopefully you can see that my front heel is slightly up off the ground, just a little bit. And then my swing's going to, to really trigger when that front heel goes down. When I watch guys swings in slow motion or on video, I always start watching from when that heel goes down. When that heel goes down is where you can really see a lot of flaws in a hitter. An example is when that front heel goes down, my hands should still be up and they should be back. At that point, you'll see a lot of kids like this. The hands have drifted, they might even start to collapse. The hands have dropped down in here. That's a really weak position to hit from. I mean, you can tell just by looking at that position, this is not a very strong position, whereas that's a, a much stronger position. That's because your eyes just know instinctively that you want the hips to lead the swing. From this position, there's, there's um, no separation. When we talk about separation, really simple definition is the distance from your knob to your front hip. Right here, there's a lot of, of separation. There's big distance from here to here. This point, not much of a, of a gap there, so not much separation, and your eyes know that instinctively. So when that front heel drops, we gotta make sure the hands are still up, they're still back. As that heel drops, feel this front hip start to open, start to trigger. It's almost like your hips are swiveling open. There's gonna be a slight bump going forward, and that bump should happen uh, mostly because your back knee is driving forward. So your back knee should drive forward, and you shouldn't really squish the bug. It's really a misnomer. When you hear people talk about squishing the bug, you turn your back foot, but squishing the bug uh, makes you think more of staying back in here. We want that back knee to kick forward, almost like, like you're, you're right here, and somebody's gonna hit your back thigh to help kick your knee forward. I'll tell people, think there's like somebody um, right here and you want to try and knee them. So we're taking that back knee forward, okay? You can even put like a bat right here and just work on kneeing the bat to kind of get the, the action of that right knee. That should be simultaneous with this hip opening up. So as the front heel goes down, that's step one. Step two, hip opens. Step three, back knee's driving. All three of those things happen really quickly together. So don't think of them as three separate parts. Think of them all as part of being an athlete in the batter's box and they're all happening together. So just be athletic with that move. Don't think too much. Don't make it too, um, you know, like uh, choppy or anything like that. Those three parts together. Now, once we've done that, we transfer the weight from what was probably 60, 40. Now we're in the middle. So at this point, once that heel goes down, back knee drives, I should have my weight in the middle. We should have the two knees close together. So if you look at my knees right here, they're pretty close. We should have a back um, or a, a high back heel. Sometimes you'll see hitters with a really low back heel. That means that they're not getting a good knee drive. So we want a high back heel, the two knees close together. Front leg should be straight. We don't want it bent like this. Uh, and the hip should be opened up. So at that point, your hips should be open facing the pitcher. If your hips are still closed like this, that's no good. We need the hips to be opened up more right in here, okay? So again, um, just to wrap those, those things up, make sure that front heel drives down. I'll tell people, imagine that there's like a pole going from your hip down through your left heel. And when you drop the, the front, uh, when you drop the front heel, focus on driving that pole down into the ground. Once you drove, have driven it, I don't know if driven's a word by the way, but once you've uh, put the pole down into the ground, let's put it that way, then we're gonna open up the hips, okay? Right al along that pole that we put into the ground. So imagine pull through the left hip, through the heel, 
drive it down, and then rotate on it. A couple uh, problems that we'll go over real quick here that you'll see a hip glide where somebody's hips go this way too long. Okay, they haven't uh, put the, the weight down through that pole. So we don't want the weight to, to glide forward or slide. Uh, sometimes you'll see hitters where their front hip goes up in the air. That makes it tough to release the front hip through the ball and it usually leads to them stopping their hips about right here. That can be a big problem too. The easy fix for all those things, think level hips and keep the front hip down and open it up. Act like you're driving the hip down and around almost back around this way, okay? So again, front heel drop, back knee drive, weight should be in the middle. Make sure that you're releasing those hips through the ball, not stopping halfway or getting a, a hip glide or that front hip up.